Welcome TLC family. I'm Pastor Shauna Jacobs from the Life Church Avenel and welcome to online Bible study. Let's just take a moment and quiet ourselves and quiet our minds and get ready to hear from God because God is speaking tonight and it is natural for you as his child to hear his voice, to receive revelation. And the reason why some of us, we feel like we don't hear him is we're just distracted, right? We're not quiet. So let's get quiet right now. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your presence here, your presence here in my house, your presence there with everyone watching right now, that they would just experience your peace like a breath of fresh air in the midst of their week, Lord. Your peace is there. Your spirit is there with them, ready to guide, ready to give wisdom, ready to show them exactly what needs to be done and even how to do it. Lord, we thank you that you are into the details and that you help us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for helping us tonight, for teaching us and for guiding us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glory to God. Well, we've been in a really exciting unit, a very empowering unit, talking about God in a man. And over the past couple of lessons, we've been developing, you know, how is this possible? Um, the, the mystery of the gospel is Christ in me, Christ in you as believers, which is the hope of glory. And all throughout the New Testament, we see these pictures and these symbols of us being one with Christ, joined to the Lord. It says he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. And so what does this mean for us in our everyday lives? This means that we are never alone. And not only that, everything that we go to tackle, we have the um, the backing of heaven on the inside that we can allow, you know, as we're containers of God, we can allow him to not just stay in our spirit, but to overflow into our flesh, into our mind, into those around us. You are the only Jesus that people will ever see. The people that God's placed around you, it's not an accident. No, he means for you to be an ambassador of Christ, a reflection of God on the earth. You are made in his image. You are his child. You've been a partaker of the divine nature. You're holy and righteous now. And just like he's the vine and we're the branches, the branches is the part that bears the fruit. That's what people see. That's what people pay attention to is the fruit that oh, they get to enjoy. And that is the fruit, the fruits of righteousness that you're bearing in your life. And we're not bearing them on your own. You may say, oh, how can I bear this great fruit for people to enjoy? How can I, you know, help people around me? What do I have to offer? The fruit is, is a result of us being connected to the vine. We're connected to the vine, Christ. And we get our nourishment from him. The water flows through the vine. The nutrients flows through the vine. So if you've been feeling a little crispy, like you're not getting the water, like you're not getting the nutrients, just focus your attention on Jesus. Just come back to Jesus and let him minister that life to you. Minister the, the nutrients that you need to then bear this fruit for people to enjoy and for people to get nourishment from through you. Hallelujah. Yeah, it's a great responsibility. Yes, it is. Being a Christian is not just floating through earth and just, you know, oh, okay, sarah, sarah, whatever will be, will be. No, God, all of heaven and all of hell are looking at you, waiting to see what you're going to allow. What are you going to decree? What are you going to believe and confess in your life? Because you are the one who 
allows the one who um, has the ultimate authority and dominion in your life and what goes on around you. They're waiting on you. What are you going to say? You know, we studied for several weeks our authority in Christ and how Jesus has delegated heaven's authority to you on this earth. And so if we look around and we see things are messed up, then what are we going to do about it? Are we going to speak light and life to those situations? Are we going to be a reflection of the light of God, bringing that light into the dark room and dispelling the darkness? That's our job, church. That's your job and my job. Amen. Glory to God. Well, today's lesson is entitled, You Do Something. <laughs> yep, you have a responsibility and there's something for you to do. And way too many times, believers end up praying and saying, oh God, please take this from me, or oh God, you know, do something about this. And again, he's looking at you saying, you do something. Because so much of what we ask for and beg for and cry for has already been accomplished through the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we just need to enforce it. Amen. There's something for us to do. We're not waiting on God here. He's waiting on us to take our place as believers and to walk out his plan and purpose on this earth. Glory to God. So let's kind of study through this and see what were Jesus' expectations in this area. John 14, 12 is where we're going to start. Jesus is speaking here and he said, most assuredly, I say to you, who's he talking to? Was it just those around there, him at that exact moment? Or is the word of God eternal? It's eternal. Just like Jesus was speaking to them, he's speaking to you. Just listen, hear Jesus speaking to you right now. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. Wow. Did Jesus believe in us? <laughs> my goodness. Jesus believed. He said, those who believe in me. Do you believe in Jesus? Raise your hand if you believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's our Lord and Savior. He said, those who believe in me, the works that I do, he will do also. What kind of works did Jesus do? We know when Jesus was on the earth, his ministry was he went around teaching, preaching, and healing. Everyone who came to him was healed. Everyone who came to him heard the truth, the living word. Everyone who came to him experienced the love and the grace of God. Those are the works of Christ. Can you do that as well? Jesus said that you could. And that's what he's expecting. Right? When our Lord looks down, he expects us to be acting like him. Acting like he did on this earth. And we've already established, church, how this is possible. We know that it's nothing that that we earned, we didn't earn this great responsibility. We didn't, you know, pray so many hours or read our Bible so long that we just all of a sudden have attained the status that now we go work, work the works of Christ. No, this is because of Jesus' blood and him making us holy and righteous and him placing the spirit of God on the inside of us, empowering us to do these things. It's not of our own strength. We can't do anything without him, but because we have him and he's in us, what's impossible? Nothing is impossible to them who believe, Jesus said. Do you believe? Absolutely. You've got the faith of God on the inside of you. Let's stir it up. 
right? Let's stir up that faith today and be inspired to actually do something with it. Hallelujah. So Jesus expected us to work the works of Christ. 1 John 4, 17 says, Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is. How is Jesus right now? Is there anything too hard for him? Is he greater than any obstacle, any power of darkness, anything that could come across his path? As he is, so are we. Where? Oh, when we get to heaven, right? Because then we'll be perfect and then, you know, there won't be a devil to contend with and then we'll be like him. As he is now, so are we where? In this world. There's something for you to do now. He expects you to act like this now. Even when you're feeling the pressure, even when there's doubt and unbelief around you, he says, now in this world, you're like him. Hmm. In Hebrews, it calls Jesus the firstborn of many brethren. You know, when Jesus, it talks about Jesus being the seed that God planted right? He gave us his only begotten son. He was the only begotten at that point. And he sent him into the world to live a perfect life and die this tragic death and go to hell and suffer and then be raised by the power of God over through the devil and all the powers of darkness and then ascended back into heaven. God, Jesus was God's seed. He planted Jesus, expecting a crop. Now, what's the crop? You and I were the harvest now. We were the crop because Jesus was planted. Now he's no longer the only begotten son. Now he was the firstborn of many brethren. Now the family is growing and becoming enormous with all of these children of God. You and me, when we believe in his name, when we receive him, we become children of God, partakers of the divine nature, born not just of earthly things, but born of God. You are like him. I mean, we read last week in the psalmist said, what is my, a man that you're mindful of him? And then goes on to say, you've made him a little lower than Elohim. God made, you know, when he had children, he had children of his own species, of his own essence. You've been made like God. Now, I know that bothers some of our religious teaching, you know, our religious minds were like, how can you say that? That's blasphemy. No, the Bible says it. Can we just submit to the word of God? The Bible says that we've been made like him. Jesus is saying that we're to work his works and do greater works. Amen. The word of God is saying as he is, so are we right now in this world. Can we just put aside those old religious ideas and just accept the word of God? Yes, it means we have to change the way we think about ourselves. Yes, it means we should change the way we're acting out our life and walking out our life because we've been living as mere men, Paul would say. Mere men instead of God in a man. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hmm. Hallelujah. So it said in 1 John 4, 17 that 
we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we in this world. So when it comes to judgment day, what is our, our boldness? Will you be found that you've walked like Jesus on this earth? You know, the Apostle Paul talked a lot about this crown of righteousness that's laid up for us in glory. You know, on that judgment day when we give account for our actions, our deeds on this earth, you'll receive a crown, a reward for the things that you did for God. The things that he asked you to do and you said, Okay, Father, whatever you want. And you just trusted him and you followed his plan. You get a reward for that. You know, you acting like Jesus on this earth, fulfilling your calling and your purpose, gives you boldness in the day of judgment. Because you can stand up and say, yes, I did what you wanted me to do, Father. Amen. I've run a good course. I've kept the, I finished the race. I've kept the faith. That's what the Apostle Paul said at the end of his life, right? He's like, I did it. I kept the faith. I did a good job. Oh, is that proud of him to say that? Should he not say, I kept the faith? No, that is something that we can say. At the end of our life, we can look back and say, no, I did keep the faith. I ran a good race. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So Jesus' expectations, right? As he is, so are we. We're like twinning with Jesus, right? We look like him. Now, Jesus, even during his earthly ministry, sent people out. And I'm showing you this so you can see his expectation, right? What did he expect from these people that he sent? Well, in um, Matthew 10, we see he first sends out the 12 disciples, right? These are the 12 guys who've been walking around with him, hanging out with him, seeing his ministry, participating in his ministry. And then Jesus says to them, Matthew 10, verse 5, these 12 Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, nor enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, they're supposed to preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What else do they do? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you've received, freely give. Now, Jesus had some pretty high expectations for his disciples, right? They've been hanging out with him. And I just want to point out, too, that these men were not yet born again. Jesus hadn't gone to the cross yet. But Jesus still delegated them authority and said, go do this. I think as examples for us, too, looking back, right? But they were to preach, to heal, to cleanse, to cast out... And Jesus kind of gave them the rationale. Hey, freely you've received. You've been delivered and healed and cleansed. So give. All of us are in this same situation. Amen? We've received so much from God. We've been cleansed and healed and delivered and saved. So how can we hold that to ourselves? Right? How can we, you know, when we have the light, when we are the light of the world, how can we cover that and not show it to the world and not help them? Freely we've received, freely give. Right? So if you're saying, well, those were just the disciples or some people call them the apostles and they were special, right? It was just for them and not for us. Well, think again. Because Jesus, the 12 weren't the only ones Jesus sent out. Let's go to Luke 10. Luke 10, and I'm going to read a few verses from this chapter. I'll read verse 1 first. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others. 70, like 70. 70 others. <laughs> also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So before Jesus would go into the town, he sent these people ahead of him, the 70. So it's not just the 12 disciples. No, we've got a bunch more people going forth. Now, what did he want them to do? Verse 9, and heal the sick there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. 
Because Jesus was about to show up, right? The kingdom of God was really near to them, even in the flesh. So they were supposed to heal and they were supposed to preach the kingdom of God is near to you. Well, what happened? Let's go to verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, they're excited, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. So they're excited because they're like, wow, well, Jesus, even demons, you know, we spoke, we told them to go like you did, and they, they, they left, they went. And he's like, yep, I gave you that authority. I gave you that power. Wow, right? Church, there is nothing that you need to be afraid of. If you could just see yourself like Jesus saw you, if you could even just see yourself like Satan sees you, when he looks at you as a believer, a child of God, wow, wow, he sees heaven on the inside. He sees the Spirit of God. Hmm. There's nothing that he can make you have or make happen to you that you don't allow. Glory to God. So the 70 were excited. Now Jesus didn't stop there. He's like sending people out left and right. He sends out the 12. He sends out the 70. And then after he goes to the cross and, you know, was raised from the dead, then he's standing and there's more people around and he's about to ascend into heaven. And then what, what command does he give then? Mark 16, Mark 16, 15. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Uh, let me see another uh, uh, show of hands here. How many of you believe? Have you believed in Jesus? Yep. Then he's talking to you. He's talking to me. He's talking to us, the church the body of Christ. What signs follow us who believe? In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. They will drink, if, if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Hallelujah. So when Jesus said, the works that I do, they will do also those who believe on me. Here he's even more explicit. Look at these are the signs that are going to follow you, believers. People are healed. Demons are cast out. You know, we've got deliverance happening, salvation happening as you're preaching. These are the signs that follow you. You look like Jesus. Amen. And so walk like that on this earth. Let the Spirit of God manifest through you. You are not just some little nobody, little wretch or a worm or whatever. No. You need to see yourself the way God sees you. Because if you don't, if you kind of, for some reason, you have this, this false humility that, oh, I'm just nothing, then the devil has deceived you. And he's deceived you to the point where you, he's crippled your influence on this earth. Again, like I said in the beginning, you are the only Jesus that people are going to see. He's not going to appear to people in a vision. He sent you. He sent you to them to preach and to heal and to deliver. That's your job. Don't let the devil talk you out of it. Don't let religious tradition talk you out of it because people will suffer. You're supposed to have that fruit for people around you. Amen. All right. So those were Jesus' expectations. I want to show you one more example here. And this, I'm taking you back to the Old Testament. This guy wasn't even born again. But I want you to pay attention to the responsibility that God put on him, the expectation that God had. Okay. This is Moses. And at this point, 
Um, we're going to kind of go in the future and then fa- and then kind of backtrack to the, the past in Moses' life. But in Exodus 14, um, the children of Israel at, are at the Red Sea and Pharaoh and his armies chasing them from behind and they're stuck and they're afraid. Like they're complaining, Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt? You know, I know we were slaves there, but now look at you're going to get us killed and da da. And so Moses says to the people, he gives this wonderful speech. He says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. Sounds good, doesn't it? It's a pretty inspirational speech, hopeful, let's just look to God kind of thing, right? Was God happy with that though? Well, let's see. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? What? (laughs) It wasn't like, oh, wonderful speech, Moses, of course, step aside and let me do something. No. The Lord said, why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward, but lift up your rod, stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. What was God's expectation for Moses? He didn't want Moses standing there and and just praying, oh God, please, you know, do this for us and split the sea and save us. No, God expected Moses to do something. He said, you speak, you stretch out the rod, you command the children of Israel to go forth. And then when he did, you know what happened, right? Then the sea split. They walked on dry ground, which was miraculous. And then they got through and then the seas um, flowed over the, the Pharaoh and his army, right? And they were all destroyed, but the children of Israel were preserved miraculous. God expected Moses to work the miracle. Isn't that awesome? Wow. (laughs) And so, you know, if I told you we kind of backtrack then, if we see um, in Exodus 4 verse 10, God was trying to talk Moses into going to Pharaoh to set the children of Israel free. And it says, then Moses said to the Lord, oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Neither before nor since have you spoken to your servant, but I'm slow of speech and slow of tongue. Like, hey, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. So the Lord said to him, Who's made, who has made man's mouth? Or who makes the mute, the deaf, the seen, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now, therefore, go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what, what you shall say. But he said, O oh Lord, O oh my Lord, Please send by the hand of whomever else you may send. So the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. God got angry with Moses. I think sometimes he might get a little angry with us too, huh? Like, come on, I gave you everything you need to be able to do this. Just you do something, right? Like our title today. And so Moses is like arguing with God and God's getting angry. And he said, "Hmm." and so the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite your brother? I know that he can speak well. And look, he's also coming out to meet you. When he sees you, he'll be glad in his heart. Now you shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. So God's kind of like, okay, this is not my plan A, but plan B Aaron can go with you. Okay, right? And I will be with you with your mouth and with his mouth, and I will teach you what you shall do. So he shall be your spokesman to the people, and he himself shall be a mouth for you, and you shall be to him as God. And you shall take this rod in your hand with which you shall do the signs. So again, look at the expectation that God had for Moses. And Moses wasn't even born again. He was just a man anointed for this job, right? But as he was arguing with God, God's angry. He gets fed up and he said, ah, okay, fine. You can have Aaron, but you're going to be to him as God, as me. Children of God. 
church, believers, God thinks so highly of you and he needs you to walk out the plan of God. He needs you to be like Jesus on this earth. And so let's not anger him. Let's not frustrate him, but let's actually allow the spirit of God to flow through us and touch people around us. Amen. Amen. See yourself like that this week. Expect more from yourself because you've got the spirit of God on the inside of you. Glory to God. You're not unqualified. Jesus has qualified you to work the works of Christ. Hallelujah. Well, I'm Pastor Shauna from the Life Church Avenel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you've been inspired and empowered by the word of God tonight.